Um, cool. What else did I do on the weekend? Oh, oh yeah, weekend. The most important thing, of course, on the weekend, watching Manchester United play quite possibly one of the worst brands of football that you can see in the Premier League. Um, so, but United drew 1-1 away from home against West Brom, which on paper, I guess you could say isn't a bad result, but considering how we started the season, considering that we were, you know, top <coughs> for a couple of weeks and considering that we were kind of led to believe that we're in some sort of title challenge and that this side had the credentials needed or the players or the personality in order to mount that, it's disappointing to see where we are, how we're fluttering and how we just can't necessarily keep uh, pace with what Manchester City are doing I think they recorded what is it 16 um, wins back to back right conceded hardly any goals looking stronger than ever they rested Ruben Diaz the other day and still ended up you know winning so we just look you know Oh, in context, the result isn't that bad, but considering what else is going on in the league and considering the chance we have to actually mount a tight challenge, especially with Liverpool, um, you know, off form, it really is an opportunity missed. And I guess as a game itself, it was pretty poor in terms of quality. I don't think we saw much from either side to suggest that, they're <laughs> that they are worth their ticket in admission. I think United might be the worst footballing side of the top six, I would say. I think if we're not playing counter-attacking football, we're pretty boring and turgid and passive and lacklustre to watch. The ball goes side to side, we keep possession while the stats are all in our favour. But in terms of incisive uh, patterns in our play in order to open teams up, we don't have answers. And people can say, oh, it's hard to defend against teams, it's hard to play against teams who play 11 men behind the ball, but cool they know we have good players so they don't want to give us space this is a common thing that we're going to face with teams that are outside of the quote-unquote top six they're never going to play to our liking or why should they right they're smaller sides with less resources and probably not as good type players as we have they have to make the best of what they can if they can and the best thing for them in that possibility to get a point or to win the game would be to sit deep make sure they limit the spaces um you know make sure they don't allow us to go wide and put in little crosses make us play in the middle through the net well, narrowly as much as possible which is impossible because you have to break basically three lines of defenders and then hope that they can spring an attack on the counter or nick a goal whenever they get the chance which they most likely will because with our defense we're always going to leak a goal or two and our keepers don't seem to be in the best of form at the moment especially david de Gea. so Again, it wasn't as if like we dominated the game in that sense. We might dominate position, but I would gladly say West Brom probably had the better chances. They probably had the more clear cut chances, uh, chances that they actually, you know, uh, devised not from our mistakes, but actual good play, switching the ball out to the flanks, crossing it in. Um, they had uh, Digne or Diengi or what's his name playing up front for um, uh, West Brom, who caused um, Harry Maguire and. Victor Lindelof, all sorts of problems. Diangana, um, Diangi, if you pronounce him, Diangi or Diangi, or however you pronounce his name, he ended up scoring two, a goal in the first minute, or first two or three minutes. He basically out muscled um, Victor Lindelof in the box and just ended up heading it home. And um, that's maybe an example of just where we've kind of faltered at the moment, right? The defence isn't that good. But again, I think it's an easy excuse to blame our centre-backs. We know our centre-backs aren't the best. We know we don't have... Um, we know that we signed Harry Maguire to be the transformational centre-back in the likes of, uh, you know, what's his name? Uh, Virgil van Dijk. But he's not that player. We grossly overpaid for him. He's probably no better than a James Tarkovsky, um, you know, Ben Mee. Um, that sort of level of player, I would I would go as far as saying I don't even think he's better than Eric Dyer as a centre back. He's pretty average. He's slow. Um, for the size that he is, he gets manhandled too way too often, as you saw in the second half towards the end of the game, where he kind of tried to buy a foul in his own box by um, letting Diengi basically wrestle him to the floor. It should have been a free kick. Don't get me wrong, but still, a defender should never be in a position where they're trying to win fouls in their own box. You should just be clearing it all. You know. Um, whatever it needs however way it needs be so all in all a pretty terrible game to watch now again analyzing it overall i think if we didn't have bruno fernandez on the pitch we probably wouldn't have drawn and if we didn't have our defenders in the that we have at the moment we probably wouldn't have conceded so this game was probably a fair result in terms of 1-1 i don't think either team were really that great up front i think even though West Brom created better chances they didn't really have the quality to, to really convert them um apart from again digging kind of goal um there wasn't you didn't really feel as if they were like threatening us but they did have 
better chances if you get what i mean it's hard to kind of compute it and then overall i just think our over reliance on bruno fernandez is really telling like apart from it, i can't remember any other instances outside of that chance which he kind of you know shinned it in the top corner out of nowhere on his left foot you know a volley um it's kind of a goal that you don't really expect him to score he does he pulls up in clutch moments he's got crazy numbers but again he wasn't that great either he's really not one of the criticism i'd have of bruno fernandez even though he's kind of been a transformational player and i think he's raised our standards in the team and our expectation levels in the same way that maybe ibrahimovic did when he came into a changing room the only issue i'd have with bruno fernandez is that he doesn't really play like a midfielder he plays way too far forward for me, which leaves too many gaps in the midfield and the defence. If you see here the lineup I've got here on the screen, right? We play essentially like a four a four two three one, right? Kind of, right? Or you could say we play a four three three, depending on how you look at it. But either way, what ends up happening? Because Bruno Fernandez is basically in line with Martial, Cavani and Rashford, or sometimes ahead of those guys, it leaves a massive gap between um the the last striker and I guess the first midfielder that gap is really huge if he was playing as an actual attacking midfielder like a quintessential number 10 number 8 he would occupy this area a little bit more and they'd, they'd maybe move up as a unit and come back as a unit but at the moment what ends up happening is that when we're attacking we end up having all of these players further forward and then we have these two defensive midfielders in Fred and McTominay who I think personally aren't good enough to probably play that role we probably need a as kind of um expert as a dm to play what one person in that role so you have to go away and play two but i'd still think both of them probably aren't good enough positionally to kind of be disciplined enough to kind of screen the back line and then the back line itself especially with the two center backs are not necessarily good enough to play further up the field because they're both pretty slow they get turned very quickly they easily turn they easily dribbled past and they get manhandled way too easily especially Maguire given his size I think Vuta Lindelof is, is always you know he's never going to be that kind of combative physical defender he probably would be best suited to playing in a system with a back three um he's a little bit more better he's a little he, he was a little bit more cultured let's say on the ball um but still they, they because we we don't have that confidence in the middle of the pitch they kind of you know drop a bit too deep which leaves too many gaps for a forward which then gives the opposition the chance to exploit those holes and those gaps and in general you know there's always a mistake and there's always a goal that we're going to see off the back of that and of course you could blame the players but i think a lot of that has to do with the management i still think you know, even when we're at the top of the league, I just don't, you know, Man City are obviously doing what they're doing now. I just don't think you can win the Premier League with a manager or the coaching staff of the calibre of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Michael Carrick, Kieran McKenna, Darren Fletcher and Cove. It's just not going to happen, right? You're, you're competing against the best of the best. You see what Chelsea did with Thomas Tuchel and they just, you know, as I'm recording this, they just won two new at home against Newcastle. I think that's like four victories on the row now. Fair enough, he hasn't really faced that tough opposition, but he still had to win the games. He's winning the games. He's finding out who his best players are. They're playing a really great band of football. He's converted, you know, Callum hudson Odoi into a right wing back. Like, he's, you know, brought back you know Marcus Alonso who look like he's, his career's finished at Chelsea um, Antonio Rudiger's been restored like he's just kind of you know top coaches do what top coaches do and I guess the players respond to that now it could be the new manager bounce some people believe it some people don't regardless of what you think I still think at the very very top if we want to be a title winning side winning Champions Leagues winning league trophies competing in um, you know domestic cups we have to have a manager that's best in class at the moment infrastructure wise as a team we're not best in class we don't have the infrastructure to support Ole Gunnar Solskjaer which, which you know I would hazard I would assume this is just my guess all these years he's been at the club so far which is what coming up to three years there's been no real indication I've heard from his side that he wanted a sporting director so I would assume he probably doesn't want one because I think if we had a director of football who could come in maybe work alongside Oli and the coaching staff to kind of spec out the plan of the club you know overall in a three five four year five year period lay out exactly what we want to do present that to the supporters in terms of here's our long-term vision of what we want to be as a club so it could kind of you know calm us down a little bit somewhat but at the moment we have kind of just been told to believe and to hope that this gets better but we're then also being told that social needs more players in order to get this better and i just don't see the correlation between having great players 
and not having a great coach. I just don't think you win league titles that way. You might fluke a Champions League. Roberto Di Matteo proved it. Um, a few other managers, I think even AVB, Av uh, no, Avram Grant maybe has done the same thing. There's been a few managers who are basically able to win trophies, but in order to kind of win league titles, defend the titles, you need to have top class managers. You can't be having players that we have at the moment being coached by the coaching staff we have and be expecting different results. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think the, f the great results were the great results because we have good players and they were able to perform. But the moment that stopped and we needed other solutions, we need maybe a change in formation, a change in tactics, a change in personnel, whatever it may be, just to kind of get us restarted again, our coaching staff have come wanting. And you have to really look at it and think to yourself, yes, of course, there's a rumour out there, I think at the moment now, especially the defenders that supposed to be Eric Bailly got into a car crash, that's why he hasn't been involved, which is strange because he keeps getting picked in the squad, so I don't know what's going on there. If you're in the squad or on the bench, you'd imagine you're fit enough to play, right? So if he's not in the right mental state to play, he shouldn't be anywhere near the club, but um, or anywhere near the, sorry, the match day squad. If that's the case, so it, 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 let's say that's not the case, there's still something to be said for complaints to be had for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer thinking that Victor Lindelof is the better defender of, out of Eric Bailly and him that's some of the things that I kind of think kind of lets him lets him down and lets down the coaching stuff that kind of decision making where you just think to yourself like how does that make any sense the fact that you know Maguire plays every single game even when he's not playing well and doesn't get rotated with somebody else give him a bit of a break the fact that we rely on Rune Fernandez so much the fact that Rashford is, seems to be putting up all the numbers but his actual performances in games are just you know not what you'd expect them to be the fact that Marshall can't hit a barn door to save his life the fact that we bought and you know an old and aging Edison Cavani who looks like he's out of his depth um in all sense purposes and he's meant to be a striker that we're meant to rely on more so than Odin Ugalo who I thought didn't was didn't really get a fair crack of the whip at United when it came down to it, as soon as you know Cavani walked in, we treated him like a brand new toy and kind of dismissed of 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 Igalo. And I would hazard a guess that, you know, they're probably not that far apart in terms of what they can offer teams right now. Yes, Cavani's maybe had a better career than Odin Igalo, but you can't tell me that Igalo wouldn't offer more than Cavani's offering now at the moment. It's just a complete mismanagement of the squad and again i'm really worried about us finishing in the top four maybe we've accumulated enough points that it's going to be very hard for us to drop out but considering how much fire has been rejuvenated into chelsea considering the fact that Mourinho essentially his job's on the line if he doesn't get top four finish at least fifth considering arsenal have kind of caught a bit of a second wind um leicester are obviously doing bits and i really rate brendan rogers i think he's another very underrated manager in the league it's not um it's not a foregone conclusion that we could finish maybe outside of the top two maybe even finish third do you know what I mean? considering how we started the season that is an abject failure especially if we don't win a trophy and it, it just it just doesn't fill me with hope like knowing that we're gonna have to rely on just oligon social what getting better as a coach overall in the next year or so with better players i just don't see how that happens but again you know what can you do united won West Brom one away from home. I guess that's a point better than nothing. And I guess we go again. We go again very, very soon.